Hello YouTubers, it's Rick the Tech Enthusiast again, here with the next lesson number four, RGB LED. In this lesson, we'll hook up an RGB LED and use the Arduino to create all sorts of colors. We'll even learn a little about PMW or pulse width modulation. So let's get started. In this lesson, we're going to need the following items from your kit. The Arduino Uno R3 board, breadboard, four male-to-male -male jumper wires, the RGB LED, and unlike the other LEDs, it's the LED with the four leads, and three 220 ohm resistors. As before, the tutorial goes into greater detail about the RGB LED, but simply put, the RGB LED is a red, a green, and a blue LED in a single package. And that's why there's four leads. Changing the brightness of each LED changes the color. Now, unlike regular LEDs, the RGB LED, its positive leads are the three shorter ones. If you recall in lesson three, the regular LED's positive lead is the longer one. Note that the negative lead in the RGB LED is shared internally. And lucky for us, this time, instead of swapping out resistors to adjust the brightness like we did in the previous lesson, the Arduino can be programmed to do this for us. Yay! Again, the tutorial goes into greater detail about the color and pulse width modulation. I encourage you to go check it out. Let's briefly talk about colors. Simply, any color can be created with the RGB LED by varying the brightness of each individual LED. By mixing the colors at full brightness, we can obtain white. Red and green make yellow. Black isn't so much a color as the absence of light. This is the same idea we use in LED TVs. Pulse width modulation is a technique to control power, but it also has the effect of controlling brightness. As you see from page 54, or this diagram, we, if we limit the amount of time a pulse is sent to an LED, it tricks your eyes into seeing different levels of brightness. We define those levels in Arduino from 0 to 255, with 0 being no light and 255 being the brightest. On page 55, you'll see the schematic. And here's my version. On page 56, you'll find the breadboard diagram. And here's my version. Now here's the circuit all hooked up. Here we have the RGB LED and it's hooked up through the 220 ohm resistors on all the anodes and they're connected to pins 6, 5, and 3. The ground pin is then connected to the cathode and that's all there is. So from this point, on page 57, the tutorial recommends that we go and install the Lesson 4 RGB LED sketch file. So we need to go to where you've saved the Elegoo zip file and then go under your language, my case English, under code Lesson 4 RGB LED. We would then just double click and install the, the sketch. Here you can see the RGB LED sketch. And I'll just expand it here. In the beginning, you'll find some defined pins, uh, the blue, red, and green. We uh, do the void setup and uh, define the pin modes for those. We have some uh, global variables, red value, green value, and blue value. And under the main loop, the void loop, you can see we have a defined delay time. We set the LED initially, and then we begin a for loop to fade it from red to green. And then after that loop, we set the LED again, and we do yet another for loop. 
And then we set it for a third time and finish with another for loop. After reading it, it kind of made me think, well, maybe there might be a slightly better way of doing this since we're repeating code three times. But I guess for now, so let's go ahead and upload the sketch to our Arduino board and see how it performs. The LEDs begin to flash and it uploads the sketch. And as you can see, it starts to fade from one color to another. Now, the camera does not do it justice. It looks way more vivid in real life than it does on the camera. I'm not sure why I couldn't get that to, uh, to view properly, but I assure you it does fade from red to green and then green to blue and then blue back to red. And then it repeats. It looks awesome in real life. Uh, you really have to download it and check it out. So back to the Ella Goose sketch. I got, it got me thinking about how the pound define is used as, as one of the global um, constants in this case. And I, I recall a fact that uh, when I went to Arduino's website and looked up pound define, that it suggested that um, using pound define though is useful, um, could have some unwanted side effects. And so that possibly using a constant name or some other constant variable would be probably a more preferred solution than using pound define. So that's one of the things I thought I could do to improve the sketch. If we move on, we can see on the void setup, we do define the pins. But I got to thinking that the digital rights here were probably not necessary and we could probably just remove those. You notice there's also some uh, uh, global variables, uh, the int red value, green value, blue values. I got to thinking perhaps maybe we didn't necessarily have to have them as global variables and they could be inside local variables within the void loop. Inside the void loop, uh, I can see that they did the pound define again, which again, I didn't think that was probably uh, the best thing to do here. They defined the red value, green value, and blue value for the LED. And then they proceed to run the for loop to fade from red to green. Now I went through this before, but I got to thinking, hmm, this is really familiar for the go ahead and they do it again and they define it and do it a third time. If there was maybe some way to clean up this code so we're not always repeating it. Okay, so maybe that's time for some bonus material. I know you're asking yourself, bonus material? Well, I thought perhaps maybe if I rewrite the code and in a way that I thought that might be uh, more readable and maybe uh, less uh, uh, repetitive. So I came up with my own version of RGB LED. So you can see I decided not to use the pound define because of the unwanted side effects that could occur. I went with standard constant integer global variables. And there I define the red, green, and blue pins there. And then I come up with a, uh, a normal integer max bright. Uh, it's, and I have it 130 because when I was doing the video, it was too bright for the camera. But normally you'd have this at uh, 255. We have the normal void setup. Uh, I did uh, define the pin modes for each of the pins that we're going to use in this sketch. But I also included, because we haven't done it in the past, the serial begin uh, to turn on the serial port and set it for 9600 baud. I thought maybe that would be kind of useful to see the serial monitor. We've discussed it before, but we haven't looked at it or seen it. 
So I thought that'd be kind of a neat uh, addition. So in the void loop, I did include local variables, the integer delay time, the integer short delay, the red value, green value, blue value, and an LED gear. And that LED gear is what I will use later in the sketch to, to combine the three different loops into one. So I got this idea from How To Mechatronics, and his link is gonna be down below. And he thought that we would use a function. So first I do a little serial print line to tell you what I'm trying to do here, which is the manual setting of colors. And then he uses a function set color to just send the three parameters of the red, green, and blue that need to be displayed. And that way the function takes care of running the LEDs followed by a standard delay time. Scrolling down, we can see the set color function that we have after the void loop. And it's set up pretty simply with a three local parameters, the int red value, green value, and blue value. These are local and not to be confused with the other uh, values that are local in the void loop. And then this function simply does all the analog writes that it's needed to run the LED at whatever color you want. And then I uh, perform uh, some serial prints and they display uh, the different values that were sent to the set color function. Now, this is a useful tool to diagnose uh, what's going on within your sketch. And uh, it's just kind of a neat thing to see uh, as it's proceeding through the different values that were sent to uh, this particular function. Going back up to the uh, main void loop, I continue on to the typical fade red and green that was similar to the uh, Elegoo um, uh, sketch. And I included another serial print to see where we're at when we're viewing the serial monitor. And then a little delay so you can see that we're proceeding with this void loop. And then I go ahead and do something very similar to what they did. A uh, slight modification to the, uh, the for loop, but it is calling the set color function to uh, set the actual color as it proceeds through the for loop. And then it normally decrements and increments the red and green value just as before. I should point out that I'm using uh, the max bright plus one because uh, it uh, would end up dropping off and, um, and skipping the 255 value. It then continues on to the next uh, fade to from green to blue and then, then from blue to red. Then lastly, I included uh, a fade all three colors, red, green, green, blue, and blue to red in a single, um, single loop. In this case, I used a do loop. Now we haven't seen that before either. Uh, you can go to the uh, Arduino website and see that language, but it's a simple loop. It just continues looping until the um, argument is reached. When in this case, it's uh, the LED gear is uh, must be less than four. So once it gets to four or greater, it would then quit the loop. So we set the LED gear to one to begin the loop, and then it continues on incrementing and decrementing as it's supposed to. Um, it, it, it goes to the, I call it the first gear, and it, it just challenge, it increments and de decrements the red value and green value. And then once it gets to the bottom, if it checks to see if the green value has reached 255, 
it switches to the second gear at second gear. It then switches to green value and then blue value. And then once blue value gets to 255, it switches gears to the third gear. At uh, third gear, it decrements and increments the blue and red values. And when the red value reaches max bright plus one, because again, it will skip it at 255, uh, it sets the gear to four. The advantage of this loop is it just uses one single set color to call the function and it's not repeated over and over again in each of the loops. Lastly, I have a final delay to uh, have a short pause before it just starts all over again. Well, let's go ahead and try to upload this sketch and see how it performs. The LEDs flash as it's uploading the new sketch and you can see it begins right with the manual colors. It goes through the, each of the manual colors and then it begins with the fading to the loops, the four loops that it has from red to green, green to blue, blue to red. And then lastly, it'll continue on to my last um, loop that uh, fades through all three colors in a single loop. And again, the colors are just not the same as they would be in real life. Oh, and I forgot that I was going to show you the zero monitor output. So if I go to the zero monitor icon in the upper right hand corner and click on it, it will open up a new zero monitor window. So you can see it starts with the serial print, print line of manual colors and next proceeds to the fade from red to green. It next switches to the fade from green to blue. This is followed by the fade from blue to red, which is the last for loop that was from the original Elegoo sketch. Lastly, I included uh, the fade all three colors loop and it begins with fading from red to green. Now I didn't include a print line here. I could have, but it then switches from fading from green to blue. And lastly, it goes from fading from blue to red. I included a small pause at the end, and then it just repeats uh, the loop again. The void loop begins from the beginning back to manual colors, and that's it. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you don't mind that I included some bonus material at the end. Join me next time for lesson number five, digital inputs. Thanks, and see you next time.